everyone this is the um, first major difference between algebra and calculus uh, it's called limits um, more specifically uh, we're going to be looking at one-sided or left and right sided limits uh, in this section um, first of all let's talk about notation and then we'll talk about what a, what a limit actually is so um, when you see the term uh, left-sided limit what that's asking about is the limit which again we'll talk about what a limit is in a minute uh, the limit as the X value is coming in from the left side of the graph okay, so the notation will be LIM that stands for limit X is your x value that they're basically going to give you uh, you'll have a little right arrow here that means approaching so getting close to some number let's just call it c here c is a constant and then you'll have a we normally would have an exponent you've got a little minus sign that little minus sign indicates left-sided and then you'll have some function behind this that you're actually taking the limit of so again, the way this is read is the limit as x approaches some number from the left for the function. Likewise, there's a right-sided limit. Um, this is going to be where we're approaching the x value from the right side of the graph. Similar notation except for it'll be a little plus sign instead of a minus sign. Okay, so that's the first thing, that's our notations here. Little minus sign means left side, little plus sign means right side. So again, the way they're read, the limit is x approaches c from either the left or right for f of x. f of x is some function. All right, so what exactly is a limit? A limit deals with getting close to a number. In algebra, you always dealt with exactness. Like for example, in algebra, if I gave you some function, just something basic, uh, f of x equal x plus 2, and I said find f of 3, well what would you do? You'd plug in 3 for x, and that would come out to 5. So that means when x is exactly 3, y is exactly 5. Okay. x is exactly 3, y is exactly 5, so the point 3 comma 5 was on the graph. Okay, so that was great in algebra, exactness was fine. Here with limits, we want to talk about approximation getting close to a number. Why would we want to do that? Well, sometimes in algebra there were functions that you couldn't get a y value for. For example, um, say you had f of x equal x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. And then we said find f of 3. Well, if you plug 3 in there, 3 squared minus 9 over 3 minus 3, that's going to give you division by 0. Okay, we can't do that. So in algebra, you would have said this doesn't exist, or sometimes you would might say it is undefined. Same thing as saying does not exist uh, in most math books anyway. Um, so there was no y value for that. What we'll eventually be able to do, we won't get to it until we complete the next section of material, but eventually what we want to get to is we can say the limit as x approaches 3 for this function is going to end up being um, uh, 6. Okay. We'll actually be able to estimate a y value for that x value for a, a function like this. Now it doesn't always work. There are still some functions where you, you can't even get a limit, but um, 
but it'll help with some functions. I'll say it that way. Now and again, don't worry how I'm getting six right now. We'll we'll get to that that later. But the only thing is, I'm trying to get the idea across that we can eventually sort of predict y values based on x values with with certain types of functions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this stuff. Let's take a look at these uh, example problems here. So uh, the first thing you're gonna see when you open the homework are limits asked from graphs. So I've got an example graph here and this particular question is actually four different steps. Step one, find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. Again, there's a little minus sign here, so that's indicating left-sided limit. Step 2, same x value, negative 3, but it's got the little plus sign right there, so that indicates right-sided. Okay. And then step 3 and 4, they go to a different x value. Okay. But again, left-sided and right-sided on it. So let's, let's focus on step 1 for right now. The limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. Now what I would suggest doing is once they give you that x value, go to that x value on the x-axis. So they're talking about negative 3, so the origin x is 0. If I go one unit to the left, I'm at negative 1. I go two units to the left, I'm at negative 2. I go three units to the left right there is where x is negative 3 on the x-axis. Well, I can draw a vertical line straight up and down and any point I pick on that vertical line has an x value of negative 3. Okay. So what I've done here, this, this vertical line I've drawn gives me a dividing line. I've broken the graph into two pieces. There's the left side of it, which is everything to the left of that vertical line. And then there's the right side of it, which is everything to the right of that vertical line. Okay, so that vertical line is your dividing line between left and right sided. All right, so what are we asking for here? Again, step one, it's left sided limit. So all I'm only concerned about is the left side here. I don't care about the right. If you're writing this on paper, um, you could just scratch out the right side if you wanted to. If you're looking at it on a computer, what you might want to do is get a piece of scratch paper and cover up the right side of the graph. Uh, I'm going to sort of show you what I mean here. I'm going to get rid of the right side of the graph here. Okay. I don't want any of this stuff. Okay. Forget it. I'm only concerned with what's going on on the left side of the graph here. Okay. Alright, so now what's happening coming in from the left side? So here I am at the left farthest left point of, that they're showing on the graph anyway. Of course it goes further than that, but um, as I move closer and closer to that vertical line where x is negative 3, what's happening? I'm moving across, the graph's kind of going downward, downward, now it's going downward faster and faster and faster and faster. Well, I never quite get to the vertical line. I get really, really close to it, but I never quite get to it. So you may remember that called a vertical asymptote in algebra. A vertical asymptote was a, a line that the graph could, could never cross. Well, it's shooting downward forever here. Well, if it goes down far enough, that's in the negative direction on the y-axis, we're going to say it drops down to negative infinity. Okay, so negative infinity means the graph is shooting downward as we get close to that x value, negative 3. So step 1 answers negative infinity. Okay, for step two, it's the same x value, negative three, but they want the right-sided limit. So instead of covering up the uh, right side, I want to cover up the left side now. Okay, so get rid of this stuff. 
and let's cover up the left side don't care what's happening over here on the left at all okay. alright so all I've got left is the right side of the graph it's asking for the right sided limit now alright so let's start on the right side and follow the graph back it's going back it's going back uh, it's going up 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 all of a sudden it kind of skips over a spot here that's fine it gets back here now it's going downward 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 and eventually it hits this point they have drawn here it actually runs into that vertical line we've drawn so all you gotta do is get the x value excuse me the y value for that point so if you look at that, that's one, two, three, four units below the x-axis. So the right-sided limit is going to be negative four. All right, and then step three and four, they're going to ask a left and right-sided limit again. This time the x value we're concerned with is one. So I'm going to have to kind of clear this, this graph off and kind of start over. Let me get rid of all of this stuff. Okay. Cleaned off. So X value that they're asking about now is 1. Again, we're on step 3. X approaching 1 from the left. So I'm going to go to where X is 1 on the X axis. That's right there and put a vertical line straight up and down okay there it is so again that breaks my graph down into a, a left side and a right side I'm gonna have to kinda of move this over um, oops for you to visualize that okay, there's my vertical line so here, all this stuff over here is the left and then to the right of that uh, vertical line I've drawn is the right side. Okay. If we want the left-sided limit, then cover up the right side. Forget about what's going on on the right side over here. Go all the way up to that vertical line you've drawn. I don't care what's happening over there. We only care what's happening on the left. All right, so come in from the left side. So here we are on the left side of the graph. We're following the graph. It's going down, 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 down. It kind of jumps over a spot there to get back to this point. Still coming in from the left. Eventually, we're going to hit that vertical line right there at that point. So what's the Y value of that point? Well, it's one, two units above the X axis. So that's a y value of 2. So we'd say the left sided limit here uh, is 2. Okay. And then lastly, the right sided limit as x approaches 1. So I want to cover up the left side of the graph, not the right. <coughs> um, excuse me. Cover up the left side here. All right, so forget about the left side of that graph. Coming in from the right side, let's put our pencil on it here. So here we are on the right side. We're following the graph back towards that vertical line. Going up, 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 up graph goes up forever it never quite gets to that vertical line because it goes since it goes up forever if we go upward forever on the y-axis we'd eventually get to infinity so we'd say the right sided limit is infinity
Okay, after you get through with the graphs, you'll get into um, doing limits by table. Um, this is kind of a longer way to do a limit, but it always works. So, um, I'm going to show you a shorter way here in a little bit. But if you get stuck on that, you could always default back to these tables because, again, they, they do always work. So let's kind of read this and kind of figure out what they're talking about here. So consider the following one-sided limit. The limit is h approaches 16 from the left for h squared minus 256 over h minus 16. Okay, so first thing, they're using h instead of x here. Okay, big deal. It's just a different variable. Not a problem. So in their table, they made the left column the h column. How did they get these numbers here? Well, Hawks picked them for you. If we were actually doing this by hand, we would pick the numbers. But uh, Hawks is already going to give you that, that left column. But still, how did they come up with them? So, well, what number are they asking about here? They're asking 16 from the left. So, you think about a number line. Here's 16. If we go, say, a unit to the left, we'd be at 15. 15 is to the left of 16. So they started with 15. And you typically see that on uh, in most books actually. Um, if they're doing a left side and limit they usually go about a unit to the left and start there. So they've picked 15. But Alright now what does this arrow mean? We said that means approaching. So now we want to come and get closer and closer and closer to 16. So they went from 15 to 15.9, that's maybe there, that's closer to 16. Then to 15.99, maybe that's there, that's closer to 16. And ultimately to 15.999, which is even closer to 16. So they went a unit to the left to get 15, and then they picked numbers closer and closer to 16. That's how they come up with that left column. All you really need to do here is fill out the right column. The right column is for y values. Well remember when we did the graphs a, uh, a couple minutes ago these answers that we gave these are y values all of them. When you're asked to limit you're answering a y value. So how do we get these things? Well we could take 15 and we could plug it up here into this function. So let's do that. If I plug in 15, I'd have 15 squared minus 256 over 15 minus 16. Calculate that. Um, I'm just going to use my calculator here. Um, let's see. 15 squared minus 256 divided by 15 minus 16 going to give me 31. So I plug in 15, it's going to spit out 31. And I can do the same thing with 15.9, 15.99, and 15.999. I'm just going to plug them into uh, the function up here. So let me go ahead and, and just type these in real quick. So 15.9 squared minus 256 divided by 15.9 minus 16 it's going to give me 31.9 and then if I plug in 15.99 so 15.99 squared minus 256 over 15.99 minus 16 I get 31.99 and then plug in 15.999 okay. and in a similar fashion I get 31.999 okay now how do we get our answer from this <clears throat> so the idea is this when they said the limit as H approached 16 from the left they were talking about the left side of this table we went from 15 up closer and closer to 16. We were approaching an H value of 16 here. 
our answer is going to be what y approaches. So if we look at our right side, we went from 31 to 31.9, 31.9 to 31.99, and then on to 31.999. We're getting closer and closer and closer to 32. So our solution here is going to be 32. And notice the numbers on the right are getting closer and closer together um, as we get larger. Okay. Um, another possibility would be for our numbers to get further apart as we get larger. Okay. So that's kind of a different situation. Let's look down here at number three. Okay, looks similar. Um, they're using T instead of X or H this time. That's okay. Luminous T approaches 19 from the right. So they went one unit to the right of 19. So there's 19. 20 is going to be to the right of it. So they started with 20. But then you've got to work back closer and closer and closer to 19. So they went 19.1, 19.01, 19.001. Similar fashion to what we did in the last question, it's just from the right side instead of from the left. Okay, so the left side of this table, we're approaching 19. We've got to plug in our um, t values into t squared plus 361 over t minus 19 to get our y values. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so plugging in 20, 20 squared plus 361 divided by 20 minus 19 is going to be 761. All right, then if we plug in 19.1 squared plus 361 divided by 19.1 um, minus 19, that's going to be 7,258.1 um, and then if we plug in 19.01 squared plus 361 divided by 19.01 um, minus 19 now I'm at 72,238 0.01 and lastly 19.001 I'm at 722,038.001 Alright, so notice the difference here between this and the previous question. Um, I go from 761 to 7200 and something. So you're talking about a 6500 unit jump. Pretty big jump. Okay. Now go from the second entry to the third entry. Went from 7200 to 72,000. So that's an even bigger jump. You know, again, from the first to the second one, there was about a 6500 unit jump. From 7,200 to 72,000, there's about a 65,000 unit jump. So much bigger jump. And then going from the third to the fourth entry, we go from about 72,000 to 722,000. So that's a 650,000 unit jump. So the jump is getting bigger and bigger as we go down um, this right column. So we're not getting closer to a specific number it's just these numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger that means we're going off to infinity so the right sided limit is going to be infinity um, if, in, if these were negative on the right side then we'd have ended up with negative infinity um, incidentally
Okay, after you get through with the tables, um, we'll get into what is considered the, the quick way to do limits. Um, again, if you get stuck on this, you can always default back to doing tables like you did in question two and three uh, because they always work. It's just that they take a little bit more time to do because you've got to plug in all those numbers. One-sided limits can be um, split into three different cases. Case one is going to be if you plug in your, I'm going to call it the X value here. It doesn't necessarily have to be X. It's whatever variable they're using, but we usually use X and Y. So X is what you put in, Y is what you get out. So I'm going to call it the X value here. If you plug in X and um, a Y value is calculated, okay, then you're done. Okay. What am I saying? I'm saying plug in the X value. If you get a numeric answer, you're finished. Whatever that numeric answer is, is your solution. Uh, number four here is um, is a case like this. Let me call this case one, actually. Okay. All right, so if I plug in negative four for x, I'd have negative four minus four over negative four minus three. So that would calculate to be negative eight over negative seven, and your negative signs will cancel. So you'll just have eight sevenths. I got a numeric answer there. So I'm finished. I don't have to do anything else. If I can just plug in the X value and it spits out a Y value, that's my solution. Okay. Um, case two is going to be where you get a uh, non zero number over zero. So, in other words, you're going to plug in just like you did in the first case, but instead of it coming out to being an actual number, a valid number, you'll get something other than zero divided by zero. That's what's going to happen here in number five. Let's try to plug it in real quick. If I plug in zero for x, zero minus 76, all divided by zero, we can see we're going to get negative 76 over zero. So that's a non-zero number divided by zero. Now we know from arithmetic that you can't divide by zero. Okay, so this is not a valid response. Basically what it means when you get a non-zero number over zero, then your solution is either infinity or negative infinity. But you have to figure out which. Is it positive infinity or is it negative infinity? There are several ways to do that, uh, and I'm just going to show you, um, you know, the quick and easy way to do it. Um, you have to understand what the notation is saying. Okay? So when they say the limit as x approaches zero from the left, you've got to know that little minus sign means left-sided. So what's something that's to the left of zero? Okay. So again, think about it. Here's a number line. Here's zero. If I go to the left, let's say negative one. That's to the left of zero. Okay, so plug in a number that's uh, to the left of zero. And so I'm going to plug in negative one in this case. Negative one minus 76 over negative one is going to give me negative 77 over negative one. My negative signs are going to cancel. So I get 77 there. Now I don't really care what this number is. All I care about is the sign of that number. Okay, So this 77 is a positive number. The fact that it comes out positive tells me my solution is going to be positive infinity. Okay. 
if it had come out to be a negative number, then my solution would be negative infinity. Okay. So if you get a non-zero number over zero, then automatically your solution here is going to be either plus or minus infinity. You just got to figure out the plus or the minus. Okay. Plug in something that's either on the left or right side depending on what's asked in the limit. This limit asks for zero from the left, so I went one unit to the left. I picked negative one and I plugged that in. If this had said, uh, if this had been a right-sided limit, I'd have plugged in positive one and calculated and see what and seen what would have happened that way. Okay, so you've got to look at that notation to figure out what to plug in here. Okay, so that's case two. <clears throat> Alright, uh, let's scroll down here. Let's look at number six. Let's try to do the same thing we just did in the previous question. Let's try to plug in our number again. Limit as x approaches 11 from the right for x squared minus 121 over x minus 11. If we plug in 11, we're going to get 0 over 0. And don't confuse this with case two. Case two up here was a non-zero number divided by zero. This is actually zero over zero. So this is going to make this the third case. If you get zero over zero, what it means is you have a common factor on the top and the bottom of the fraction. Since you have a common factor on top and bottom, you're able to cancel something out. So anytime I see 0 over 0, I want to factor and cancel. Okay. So again, just like negative 76 over 0 up here was not a valid solution, 0 over 0 is not a valid solution either. Okay. I'm going to factor and cancel. All right, so let's do this here. Uh, limit of x approaches 11 from the right. All right, x squared minus 121, that's the difference of squares. So that factors into x plus 11 times x minus 11. And then the bottom's already factored. So it can just stay as x minus 11. We notice we have x minus 11 on both top and bottom. Okay, so we can cancel those out. So all that's left is x plus 11. Plug in your number and you can calculate an answer now. So if we plug in 11 for x there, it would be 11 plus 11 equals 22. Alright, that's the three cases. Again, case 1 up here, you're able to plug in a number and it spits out a number. If that happens, you're finished. The other two cases, two and three, both deal with division by zero. The difference is, do I have zero on top or do I have something other than zero on top? If it's something other than zero, it's going to be plus or minus infinity. And again, i got to figure out plus or minus. If it's zero over zero, I'm always going to factor and cancel. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, number seven here, that looks kind of like number six. It's going to be the same idea. Um, go ahead and try to plug it in first. So if I plug in negative nine, uh, negative nine squared is 81. 81 minus 81 is going to be zero on top. Negative nine plus nine is going to be zero on bottom. So it's case three again. It's uh, factor and cancel. I right, can't do that, so um, let's do the factoring. x squared minus 81 will factor into x plus 9 times x minus 9. And then we've got x plus 9 on the bottom. So the x plus 9s are going to cancel out in this case. So this is going to leave you x minus 9. Plug in your number. 
negative 9 for x. Okay, so negative 9 minus 9 is going to be uh, negative 18. Okay, the last kind of problem you're going to see is going to involve what we call a piecewise function. So, for example, number 8 here. Notice this function. f of x equals 3x plus 1 if x is less than 8. And 5x squared minus 2 if x is greater than or equal 8. So, this is sort of two functions that kind of make up a, an overall bigger function. It's called a piecewise function. All this is saying is... If I want to plug any number less than 8 in, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, etc., anything less than negative, uh, excuse me, anything less than 8 in, I want to be plugging it into the top. On the other hand, if I want to plug in any number 8 or bigger, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc., I'm going to be plugging into the bottom piece. So those inequalities there tell you which piece to plug into. If you think about what a left and right sided limit is, we could say left side of 8 means less than 8 and right side of 8 means greater than 8. I mean think about it. Here's your number line. Here's 8. So if I want to go over here to the left of this, Wouldn't you agree that this is numbers that are less than 8? 6 is less than 8, 7 is less than 8. So your left side of the limit is going to go with the less than sign. Okay. And likewise, the right side over here is going to be when we're plugging in bigger stuff, you know, 9, 10, etc. These are to the right of 8 on a number line and you would say 9 is greater than 8 10 is greater than 8 so that's these so for right set and limits you look for the the greater than sign I don't care about the equal sign the equal sign makes no difference alright so on a piecewise function if they're asking for a left sided limit you want to, okay I don't know why I can't write if they ask you for a left sided limit you want the left hand side okay. if they ask for a right sided limit you want the greater than sign where the equal sign is, if it, if it even has an equal sign, doesn't make any difference as far as limits go. Just the less than and the greater than signs is all you're concerned with. Alright, so if we want to do step one, the limit is x approaches 8 from the left. I need to plug in where we have our less than sign, so that's the top piece here. We're plugging into 3x plus 1. So 3 times 8 plus 1. It's going to be 24 plus 1 is 25. And step 2, limit is x approaches 8 from the right. So right side is going to go with my greater than sign. My greater than sign is on the bottom piece here. So we're plugging into 5x squared minus 2. Alright, so uh, what does that calculate out to? Uh, 64 times 5 is... 320 minus 2, it's going to be 318. And that concludes um, one-sided or left and right-sided uh, limits.